Good job. Absolutely. Here they are. <laughs> hey, Miss Rachel. Hello. Welcome to Colors. Hey. Hi, everybody. Hey, Miss Andrea. Okay. So I'm super excited. I just had to shut the door really quick. Um, is everybody ready to be interactive? Because I have some expectations of you guys um, kind of playing with me today and us figuring things out together. It's going to be a really useful class. I'm actually going to be teaching it on color repigmentation, otherwise known as color balancing, and several ways that you can do this. And we're actually going to, when you guys take a break for your lunch, I'm going to apply these formulas and we're going to see how they um, are different when you do a different type of repigmentation. Cool. So please play with me. Interact. Everybody good? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Cool. Hi, Kayla. All right. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is obviously repigmentation. So what is repigmentation? Somebody give me their definition. Putting color back into something. So putting color back into what? Um, Not something. Hair. hair. You got it, girl. So it's putting color back into the hair. Um, in what cases would you need to do this? Would you need to repigment? Going from light to dark? Mm hmm Yes. So, yes, and just a little bit of an elaboration on that. Like, if you're going from really light back to really dark, then you're definitely going to have to repick. Okay. Um, this is also known as color balancing, um, which I already mentioned. Okay. Somebody else who's out there, tell me what the universal steps of formulation are. Hi, Miss Andrea. Hi, girl. Hey. So well, let's go over them together. And if you ever have any questions, you guys, I actually have up some posters that will tell you things like this, okay? So for instance, on this particular poster, it says, let me flip it around. There we go. So on this poster, which is actually an insert from the Demi, you'll have the formulation steps at the top of it. And these are all by the color bar. Yes? And we're going to read them out loud. So the first one is going to be determine the natural level and the percentage of gray. The next is to determine the target level, tone, and overall end results and refer to the color map to intensify neutralized tones. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is something that we're gonna take it a little bit even further. Sorry, I'm new at this. Okay, so taking it a little further by um, incorporating, incorporating part of the skill cards that is where you calculate the fabric of the hair do you guys know what I'm talking about? So it's like you, you have a number, it's in the skill cards, it's um, determining what the fabric of, of your hair is, whether it's porous or normal, and then they'll recommend whether or not you need a pre-treatment or you can just do a post-treatment, okay? Um, I'll get you the, the page number for that skill card. So this is going to be something that's going to be important, particularly during this, because you're going to be want, dealing with hair that's very fragile and blonde. You need to be particularly, particularly careful with the way that you're treating this hair. Does that make sense? 
Okay, thank you, Rachel. All right, so uh, my next question is, um, does anybody know the different ways that you can repigment hair? Color balance? Which is what? What's the procedure, Kayla? For what? Color balancing? Yes. I guess it, um, well, it's to like get it all to like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is, I'm picturing this is it in my head, but I can't explain it. I know it's complicated. This is why I really wanted to do this class today because this is something that is quite advanced and it, you have to do it all the time. It's like corrective color, right? So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you different ways that you can apply and the procedures that you can do to have an outcome. So we're going to see, we're going to divide the, ha the head in four quadrants. We're going to come up with four different ways to repigment, and then I'm going to process it during y'all's lunch period, and we're going to see how it turns out, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to determine Miss Pris's natural level, all right? So this is Miss Pris. This is her hair. Y'all see? Okay, so what we're gonna determine is the dominant pigment. Is that what it is? Well, the first thing that we're gonna determine is what our canvas level is. is so our like level seven? is. Determine yeah, canvas. I think, so if you hold this up, I mean, she is, she's strawberry-ish. So it's almost like she's an eight strawberry. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna divide it into four quadrants and then we're gonna come up with four different formulas and do a different formula on each quadrant. All right, now here's the deal. This is a level eight strawberry blonde, probably with some nines and tens going through there. So on the color wheel, if you are uh, eight or nine, okay, you are here, correct? Correct. Okay, so if this young lady comes in and we're doing a consultation with her, she decides that she wants to be a level five neutral. Okay, so you are going to have to put in all of these colors as you move around the wheel. Sorry, I'm trying to do this on camera work. All of these to get it to a level five, but then at a level five, you have red, so you then have to cancel out the red. <laughs> Y'all with me? Yeah. It's complicated, right? So when you do this, there used to be something called color craft. So color craft was like this. They would mix it and it would be like their own personal conditioner that had their own pigment in it. Well, it was a spray. They had a spray. Well, they used to just spray the hair down with like an orange so that you get the orange into it and apply a color directly on top of it. That was actually um, a way that you could repigment the hair. So does anybody else know of other ways you can do it? Honestly, I don't. Sorry. Who's talking? Faith. Who's talking? Hi, Faith. All right. So. The other way that you can do it is you can go onto the color wheel and you see that you need to add these warm colors, okay? Because remember when you did the color wheel where at level one it's blue? Yeah. So level one is black and the underlying pigment is blue, yes? Yeah. Okay. 
So in order for them to have white and Miss Pris, they had to take out blue, blue, violet, violet, red, violet, red, red, orange, orange, and yellow, orange. Now she wants to go back down. So now you have to add those things back into it. Now, does anybody know what happens if you do not repigment before you do this? It's not going to be the same color that you want. Doesn't it? Get that muddy, like, just like an ugly, mucky color. Yeah, that happens. The mucky color definitely happens. The other thing is just it'll slip right off your hair. You have to anchor the dark color into the pigment that you've just put into the hair. Does that make sense? So like if I, I, I'm my color and I go and I put a black color on my head without doing anything else and a few washes, I'm going to be this again. You have to put the pigment back into the hair in order to anchor the color into the hair. Any questions? I love you guys. I miss you. So Teresa, when we spoke about repigmenting, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't remember. You repigment with, I believe, the pigment that's two to three levels above of what you are, you are or what you're trying to get at. So if you were, Bri Brianda, right? You're talking to me? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. okay. Hi, Brianda. So if you're going to a five and she's at a nine, you need to add like this middle warmth. Okay. Like red, orange, or orange in order to get there. Okay. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. I just couldn't remember where, like, I knew it, but I didn't know, like, I had to just a refresher. Yeah, it's, it's a complicated thing. And, and repigmenting, like I said, is color correction. So I really wanted to challenge you guys with this. So here's the other thing, right? So what if Blondie McGee over here, she comes in and she wants blue black, then you literally have to go in and put every single color back into the air until you get to blue, okay? Now, as far as the procedure goes, um, there's several ways you can do it. So you can mix your formula with adding into your formula the colors that you need to repigment with. For instance, if I was trying to get to a five neutral, then I would make five N and five O R or six O R to get the red orange into it. So part of your formula would be the repigmentation that you need and the other one would be the desired outcome. So you could, you could pinch the controls. So if you wanted to be super neutral, then you could do three, four, five in. So let's look at this. So you can, guys can have a visual. So you could do like, cause she's going to a five, but she wants to be neutral. So you could do three, four, five in, and then a tiny bit of orange so that you can anchor it in. Yes? Questions? No. Okay. All right, so that's one way you can do it. The Paul Mitchell preferred way of doing it is to mix the color that needs to be put into the hair and process it all the way through before you, and then rinse it out and then apply your desired tone on top of that and process it. So there's one and two. When you do that, would you use permanent on both or would it be like a demi first and then a permanent? Yeah, demi first and then a permanent. Yeah. Do demis hold better if you start with the demi to correct it and then top it with a permanent or does it still rinse the same? Well, it's very nourishing, so it fills the hair's cuticle with something that's nourishing and then preps it to accept the, your desired color. So once that permanent color is on top, you don't have to worry about 
it changing over some time because the permanent's already like it's done and over with it's on top of it it's in there you know you're anchoring in there that way i mean you've been blonde for a long time you don't want to go dark and then have your hair blonde again the next day right so this is ensuring that you have coverage and that it's um going to last you you know that you're not going to have somebody in and plus you don't want that to happen because you have blondie mcgee who's bleached the crud out of her hair you don't want her happy to come in and put color on her hair all the time right because the integrity of their of people's hair is really what's the most important. Otherwise, if you don't take that in consideration, they won't come back to you. Is this helpful? It is. Okay. Very helpful. Has anybody had any personal experience with repigmenting? No. Isn't that what they did to my hair? I'm sorry, start again, Sarah. Oh, okay, we can go. I've just seen a lot of, I've seen people when the color, they don't feel the color right in their hair. It looks hollow almost, like they had blonde hair and then they dye it black or something. Mm -hmm. And the hair just looks hollow. You can still see the blonde, so it just looks weird. Yeah, it does look weird. Okay, so now this, now is the time that we're going to, um rack our brains and use all of your materials that you have around you and we collectively need to come up with four separate ways to come out with a five in on blondie maru okay so anybody have any ideas Nothing's wrong, you guys. Let's just, I mean, this is hard, so let's just throw it out there. Can you do a 5N and just put the additive of the colors that are missing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we would look at the color wheel. So right here is the Demi. Can you see it, Veronica? Yes. Okay, so you would look, you would look at the Demi one and go on the other side and find what they have in that orange category. Um, that's at a level seven. So I would do like a seven OR and then a five N on top of it. Okay. You want to try that? Yeah. Okay. So let's do that on panel one. We'll do a seven OR and then we'll do a five N over it with permanent. So color XG. I like that. So that's first quadrant. Who else has one? Could you maybe use an intensifier in there? Yes. Tell me more. Would you, could you use, um, hold on. Like the color drops? Like could the, you add a you know, three, four intensifier, maybe put it in the formula? Is that a possibility? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like you want to do some orange color shots and dive in. Yeah, maybe see what happens. Okay, let's do that. So let's try. Okay, so you can do up to six droppers. How many droppers do you want to do? I don't even know. Let's try three. Okay. Three drops of orange and see what happens. Andrea, are you going to use all of these formulas in each panel with the girl? The yep. Yeah, I'm going to do four separate panels. Okay. Yep, it'll be good. We need to see this. Okay, and then um, I, I didn't talk about this one earlier, but you know how you were talking about color craft, how you like can spray it? Well, you can also use um, pop. So you can do pop orange and then put five in over it. because pop is a stain. So you could stain it like you would with the color craft and then rinse it out and dry it and do a five in. Hi, Kobe. Hi. <laughs> yeah, that's what do you guys think? Yeah. I think that's I different. I wouldn't have thought to use pop. I know, I it's aggressive. I have the, yeah, I think I have the mindset 
of pop is only for fantasy color. So I kind of forget about it when it comes to anything else. Oh yeah. And, and, but that's all going to come Brianda because you'll learn how to adjust your, uh, your, you learn your rule, the rules so you can break them. And so you'll learn how to, uh, change the controls to work for you. So yeah, I mean, pop orange or maybe even pop PG keen mm -hmm. with five in over it, I think would be beautiful. So you want to try a pop one? Yeah. Pop orange or pop peachy? Um, orange. Yeah, let's just go for it. And then we'll do a five in over the top of it. And so just remember this whole time, um, of course with the Demi, we're using processing solution, but with the, the, um, the pop, it's the, just direct. the permanent, we're, we're using 10, okay? All right, so we have three panels. Who else has something for me? Four. I had a question on something else. Yeah. Um, I know back in the day they used to have a spray that you would put on the hair to even out the porosity in order to give it like a full even coverage. Does yeah. uh, Mitchell make something like that? I don't know. It might. I'm gonna <laughs> I might I'm gonna have to look and see if that's something that is like an off label use you know, but uh, we had the same thing. We had a porosity equalizer as well. But remember when I was talking about the fabric, determining the fabric of the hair, Veronica? Yeah. Hey, Rachel, did you, were you able to see what page it was in the skill cards? I think I have mine right here. I couldn't find it in there. Um, I know it's in there, but when I searched, I... Let me see, I think it's right here. So I'm, I'm sorry to do this, guys, but I really want to find it. So has this been helpful so far, you guys? Yeah. All right. So this is the chart. Here we go. Yes, very, very helpful. Helpful. So this is page this is page one fourteen of your scale cards. So this will help you determine what type of condition the hair is that you're going to be working with, and it'll have suggestions of either a pre-treatment to even out the porosity or just a, a post-treatment. It even gives you the choices, Brianda. Like it'll be like. You know, you could choose Awapui or you could choose this. So it's really helpful it, to not have to think about it and know that you're doing the right thing. Yeah. So. This is Andrea, can you do a panel with only five in on it so we can just see what it looks like? That's a great idea, Mackenzie. I love that. Okay. Of course. Let's do that. If I can just find my marker. Oh, there it is. You can see things haven't changed. Losing things. So, five in and ten. That's a great idea. Okay, so, so we've decided that we're going to do one that's 7-O-R processed with Demi with five in over it. And then the next one is going to be three drops of orange intensifier and five in. The next one is going to be processed pop orange and then rinse it out and put five in over it and then the fourth one is going to be five in with 10 volume so y'all good with that yeah so we've, we've just got her kind of sectioned off into quadrants since we're just going to do four different applications um so what time is it? It's 11. I'm early. Rach, did I go try to process them? Um, oh, you've already got it applied? What? Um, it's sure, whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, I just was going to go mix them up. Yeah, 
I mean, I think we should see the whole process. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be great. All right. So do you, do you want me to, do you want me you to take a, you with me to the yeah. color bar? Do you have a stand for your phone that you could use? Yeah. Um, the, um, or like switch to your iPad and use the iPad stand? iPad's missing. Oh. But um, do you guys want to come to the color bar with me? Yeah. Okay, let's do that then. That'd be awesome. And then I'll just take a makeshift stand. This is fun. It's like the Where's Waldo of hair school. <laughs> okay. So I also wanted to talk to you guys about the fact that um, whenever you're repigmenting, if you have any type of natural hair or like a line of demarcation and then canvas, this is a situation where your application might change because you might be leaving the new growth out and just repigmenting the part that has been processed. Yes? Give me one second. We need bowls. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. So we're gonna do pop orange. Huh? 10. And I also need processing liquid. And then we're going to do So I have grabbed the Demi 6OR. So in one panel, we're going to process or put this on first and let it process and then rinse that section out and apply 5N Color XG and process that. Okay, so that's one of the applications. The other one is going to be applying pop orange, processing it all the way through, then rinsing it and drying it at like just 85% dry and then putting five in over the top of that. So we have those two. And then the other one we were gonna do was just straight five in to see if it made a difference from filling the hair or not. So, will you guys do the other one? This is good, right, you guys? I'm back, sorry. Okay, so. Interesting. And so then we're gonna do just five in to see if it does some fading. And then the other one that we're going to do is with the orange, uh, we're going to do three syringes of orange intensifier and in, mixed in with the five in. Okay. Okay. I need to Each syringe is a drop, correct? Or considered a drop? I guess so. I mean, they say you can do up to six syringes. So I guess that would be considered six shots. Um, but the color shots I found are not quite as intense as the, like, uh, color intensifiers for XG. 
Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The ones in the tube? Yeah. Like the green, uh, the, I think there's a, yeah. Yes. Okay. But there's a variety in the color shots than there is the intensifiers, right? Yes. All right. Is that good right there? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> it might be up there. Um, I would have had this all set, but I didn't, and I wanted you guys to kind of like collaborate with me on, um, the color. So sorry, I'm not more prepared. Thank you. Okay. So let's do, I'm going to have to mark them. So let's do the back left quadrant. We're going to do straight five in and 10 volume. So left back quadrant. So I'm just doing one panel. So I'm gonna do half an ounce of color and half an ounce of developer. The other day I taught my friend Priscilla over an eight hour long FaceTime call how to um, bleach <laughs> the end of her daughter's hair. Her hair is like down to the back of her ankles um, and, and do it green, like balayage it green. Is she in school or she just like wanted to do it herself and has never done hair before? Well, she lives in San Antonio and like they're still like in quarantine and stuff. Mm -hmm. So she just wanted to do it, but I had to walk her through the process and it was really long because her hair was long. Did it come out good? It did. I was so surprised. I was like, you nailed it for your first time, girl. That's really good. Thank you, Darlene. Okay. So because she doesn't have any new growth, we're going to be doing this application from scalp to, end, scalp to the ends. I'm going to outline the section and I'm going to take a fourth inch sections and apply it from scalp to ends. And I need a brush. There was some over there though. I thought I saw some over there. All right. Are you folding clothes, Brianda? I'm putting laundry away. I'm really bad at putting it away as soon as I'm done, so <laughs> I got to get them out the basket. I think it's perfect that we have this blonde doll, though, because she's already an uh, empty canvas. So for repigmenting, this is a great thing to have. So, Is she the one that we'll be getting? She is. Her name is, her name is Jane. Jane? Mm-hmm. You know, like Dick and Jane. I like that other name you gave her earlier. What was it, Priscilla, Pris? Yeah, Priscilla. And then her daughter's name is Paris. And Paris, <laughs> is, an, Paris is an art student. She's 16. And she's like very teenage. She has a lot of teenage angst right now. Which, my daughter, since the doll heads have been hanging out with us during quarantine in my house, uh -huh. my daughter has named them. And yeah. Naomi. What's the girl with short hair? No, no, no. What did you name her? 
she's naming her Cassie. That's already her name. There is another name that she gave her. <laughs> Oh, Julia, Julia, the one that I gave a buzz cut to. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. All right, you guys, here we go. We're gonna start. So I have my back right quadrant. I'm going to outline the entire section. And then I'm gonna start at the bottom of the section and take one fourth inch sections applying from scalp to ends. The main thing that we're going to be looking for in the repigmenting process, especially when you're going this many levels, is saturation. I mean, I cannot tell you how many times I have seen like some jacked hair from people just not putting enough product. Like you don't need to swamp it down, but you need to see no dry spots at all. Yeah. So just make sure, and then after you're done, go through it. and make sure that it's fully covered. I'm not a fan of this, just because on blonde hair it stretches it, so I lay my brush flat. But that's my personal preference, just to kind of try to be a little bit easier on the hair. And then I work it through, and next section. I feel like I'm teaching my state board, this is what I did at state board, to the lady who was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is this? I must have sounded like that clear eyes guy. Clear eyes. Is this just the five one? <laughs> yeah. All right, next section. You can already tell that it's becoming slightly muddy. And I'll show you here in a minute. You have to add that warmth back into it else it'll be smoky and like not in a good way you could kind of see it through the camera right like yeah. look at that wait hold on can you see that it's really smoking it out if you want a copy of this you can Get in touch with my publicist, Rachel McCauley. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Rachel. Thank you for asking me to do this class. I was really excited. Yes, this is going to be um, posted like the other uh, color specialty classes. <laughs> Tomorrow we have a request for a class on gray coverage, which I think would be a really great class to have if you'd be interested. I'm really good at gray coverage. <laughs> <laughs> I have some tricks of the trade. I'm doing You're a lot better doing it from school. It's different. I'm, I was nervous. I mean, you can probably tell, like, I mean, I'm always nervous, especially doing Zoom classes because Last time I had to use a broomstick in my bathroom. <laughs> Why? Because I couldn't, I didn't have a tripod. <laughs> How sad is that? That's like right, so, Anna's been working with what she's got. I mean, I really gave it my best shot. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> gonna go first. All right. So since I have Kobe here with me, um, I'm gonna have Kobe mix up the next formula, which is gonna just be six OR half an ounce and half an ounce of processing liquid. How much? Um, half an ounce of OR and half an ounce of processing liquid. This is the one <clears throat> where five N is going over the six OR or are you just leaving it as is? I'm going to process it all the way through, rinse it, and then put the five in. Okay. Um, you can do it on the scale out there. I'm going to take it. And process it. Yes, please. All right. I shall do that. 
put this get the thing back on. So is everybody excited to get back in the building or how how is everybody feeling? I am. It's nice I'm with school from home. But only because I'm back at work and they're giving me schedules that I've never worked before just because I'm not in school. Mm. Is anybody feeling nervous? I was, but I think once I kind of bit the bullet and went back to work, I'm good. Yeah. So it'll be the same going back to school. Like, it is what it is. Everyone's so quiet on this call. <laughs> I need to get some new masks. I only have like two. I think I have three, but the third one I don't even count because I've worn it. It's a really good mask, but it's like so good to the point where I can't breathe under it. And I'm like, this isn't going to work. Okay. Almost there. So the good thing about like, you know, getting your seniority and, and working by, behind a chair and getting faster, the fun part is, is that after a while, you'll be applying this whole head in 15 minutes and putting her under a dryer and then doing it again during the 15 minutes that she's processing and then blow that person out, like bank it. Double book yourself and work on your speed. But first accuracy for sure. All right. And I'm gonna kind of show you guys how this is already ox like oxidizing on the hair. You can tell that it's gonna be smoky. I'm just checking for dry spots. Now remember, as hairdressers, we wanna touch, 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 work it, work it, work it, work it. Well, with Paul Mitchell color, what happens is as you work the hair over and over again, the parabens in the tube of color come out and actually create a barrier between the hair and the color, which it like hinders it from processing correctly. Okay, so let's take a look at this really quick. This is how smoky it's looking. Okay. All right. It's amazing so, just how fast like she started looking lucky. <laughs> Right? Very ashy. All right. All right. Now in the back left quadrant, we're going to move on and we're going to be doing the formula that is 6OR and Demi with processing liquid. And we're going to process that through, rinse it, dry it, and then apply the 5N over. Thank you, my love. Throw it. Thank you. All right. Okay, so the next one is going to be the 6OR. This lady is going to be looking weird when she's processing. All right, again, I'm going to outline, start at the bottom, and take one fourth inch section and apply it from scalp to ends. She has really nice hair. You guys are going to like her. Does she, have very, the, does she have the same length as Cassie? 
Yeah, but she's really silky. Maybe a little longer, but she's super silky. Do we all get that dog? I think when you come back, yeah, right? I think and we are going to blonde one and then a brunette. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yeah, so a Cassie and a blondie. All right. Does anybody have any questions about why you would choose like certain methods or confused about why you would choose different methods? I'm just still confused on how you're supposed to like gather all the colors and then go up the color wheel to go back to that. You know what I mean? Whenever like to work your way back around. One of the notes that I have here, it says like, um, like, how are we supposed to get back to that? You know what I mean? Like, um, you have to add all the colors back in, you know, yes. I just don't understand how much you would choose and, and that part of it, you know? So if, um, if you look at the color wheel, if you're going to a level one, what is the underlying pigment at a level one, Mark Anthony? Um, Blue. I, yeah, I don't have the actual color wheel in front of me. Okay. Or her, um. So it's blue. And so if somebody came in with blonde hair and they wanted to be blue black, then you would first have to put warmth into the hair to anchor the other molecules, the other blue molecules. Like you have to have warmth in the hair. Otherwise, if you just put the dark blue molecule because it's so large, it'll just slip right off the head. Okay. So, um, and like, so if she was blonde and she was going to black, then you would definitely need to put like a red, orange or a red in it. So, so then that from that can, point, you would just add a little bit, like you said, just mixing mm -hmm. them all together? Okay. That's what I did. That was the way I did it. But Paul Mitchell's way of doing it, it which is also correct and works in situations where you want to just make sure and, and guarantee they process the whole head first and then and then apply their uh, target color. So, like I said, this is super uh, like um, color correction. And this is something where if you get into doing color correction, like something like this, if you were doing this on an all over head, I charge $65 an hour. So, so is it like, is it just that flat rate of 65 an hour or is it plus product or does that like, how does that break down for you? So for me, when I did it, it was just $65 an hour. Um, but the rest of my menu was all priced out. <clears throat> like if they wanted so, to add deep conditioning or. Yeah, like that you would add. Okay. Yeah, like the product part of it. Sorry. Um, but when you correct somebody's hair, like, you'll, they'll never leave you a day in your life. Because you they're like... I feel that, like, financially, it's much, like, beneficial, more beneficial to do hourly than, like, per bowl. Because I imagine you, be, like, having to go through just so much product. Yeah, I mean, um, I really preferred working for somebody who just took care of everything for me because I am not a good business owner. I am a artist. And so she was my mentor. She taught me the way she was very like forward moving in the business. So like she was one of the first salons that went non-tipping and, um, and we worked split shifts, but everything was built into the price. Um, and I just, it just worked for me. Everything was there for me. Any product I needed was there for me. I mean, doing inventory as a B and you spend $11,000 probably at the beginning to get yourself stacked up with what you need. But I mean, after a while, like after you've kind of got your flow, getting out there and getting your own suite might be a good idea. But yeah. um, I feel like when you get right out of school, with that situation, in my opinion, it's kind of a sink or it's like a float or sink situation. 
Yeah, like you got to hit the ground running or it's going to be a fail. Yeah. I mean, one thing that we need to be really happy about, though, is the fact that nobody has wanted us around more than right now. You know, because yeah. people's hair is jacked from sure. the Rona. So, you know, this is our time. What's next? Okay, so what's next? We did five in, then we did five in with a line of orange and tea sapphire. How much five in do you want? Half an ounce, please. That's done. Here's the other ones. All right. So right now, this doesn't make any sense, right, Mark Anthony? Like, if she wants to be a neutral brown, why would I do this to her? Well, you will see, okay? And mostly what it is about is filling the cuticle of, with the hair, with the things that you have taken it out, taken out of it, so that those molecules don't slip out. Okay? Bueller. Is it a line of the pop? Hmm? A line of pop. A line of pop. And then five in, which in volume. We're just going to do a line. A line of pop. You never had somebody that wanted you to do their hair salt and pepper? Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, here, I'm going to mix up a little bit more of this. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, it's, it's a, isn't it gorgeous, first of all? Yeah. When they can be salt and pepper and like luxuriously silver. Um, it's hard to recreate with color. I feel like I'm still haven't nailed it on the head yet, to be honest. But I feel like it's a process. So it's a lot of baby lights. Yeah. And the right toner really right yes. um but i have seen some hairdressers do the most beautiful salt and pepper color like where they were starting off to get the salt and pepper and the rest of their hair wasn't and they made it like that and it was a lot of work but unbelievably gorgeous so maybe we'll have to work on that together. So I do have a question. Mixing the pop with uh -huh. color and the velvet, will it help it stay longer? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so our side with the demi that we're gonna process through in the back left quadrant is now complete. So now we're gonna move to the front left quadrant where we're going to be doing a formula that's going to be, um, did you put that in there? Mm -hmm. This one? Mm -hmm. This one. Right here. Oh, but we're going to process the pot first. It's okay, don't worry. Just put this whole tube in. Um, yeah. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do in the front left quadrant is we're going to do, um, a stain, which is pop orange. So it's their pop colors. We're gonna process that through and then put five in on top of it, okay? Mm. I imagine that you guys can kind of see where this is gonna go. Like some of it is gonna be like a really intense, bright, vibrant. Others are gonna be more muted, but they're all right. And I hate when people say this because it grosses me out but there's more than one way to skin a cat. So I'm just kind of showing you guys your options. It's, you're an artist and these are your controls. You switch them accordingly. Okay, thank you, mama. So then we'll just put five in on top. All right, so now we're gonna do just straight pop orange. I'm going to do the left front quadrant. I'm going to outline the section and then take one quarter inch sections vertically and push them back. Good thing this girl doesn't have a date after this. They're gonna know she had a dye job. 
All right. So we're going to just go ahead and dump this. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, five in and three out. Okay. Yeah. Is everybody with me still? Yeah. I know, it, I know it's I know it's boring to watch me apply. Huh? What? What'd you say? It's not boring watching you apply. Okay. I'm just trying to get in on me. This is the only action we've seen in quite some time, so we're good. Yeah, I'll second that. Here we go. I always wanted to just be this color, but I knew that it would probably make people, I don't know, like I, it would call too much attention to me or something. Like I know I like a lot of attention, but sometimes I don't. When you have orange hair, there ain't no getting away from it. I think a deep orange is like super, super pretty. Or copperies, red reds mixed together. Yeah. <sighs> it looks really cool, actually. I feel like somebody's gonna want this. You never know. But I was so excited. I thought, you know, we talked about doing a toning class, which I think toning classes are always needed. But I thought this might be, since we have a blonde baby, to, it would be very visual. And I'm hoping that when you see the results, it makes sense to you. So how many of you, when you come back, that are on this call right now are going straight into final phase? Anybody in this group? I think the people who were going to be on final phase ended up being on an LOA because they were too close to like oh, a yeah. certain amount of hours. Got it. I have like 200 more hours and then I'll be in final phase, I think. When does final phase start? That's a, um, I think it's, they used to be like, um, 1100 ish hours, but I'm not really sure how it can work right now. Well, I might be going back into final phase. Three. Droppers. Oh, three. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see that. I have a time to iron my shirt for work and I just gave up. Okay. So we just have one more section. This next section is going to be five in with three full droppers of orange color shot. Mixed together here? Yep, with 10 volume. So as she's mixing that, um, the back left and the two front panels are actually, um, or sorry, the back left and the front right. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm getting mixed up. Okay. This one, the front left and the back left are going to be rinsed and something else has to be applied on top. The two on the right hand side, once you apply it, it's a single process because we're mixing the drops into the five in. Yes? I'm not doing it in front of your class. Mute it, Naomi. Oh. <laughs> okay. So as you can see back here, old five in. There's five in. You see him? Okay. 
And then over here is the demi doing its thing. And then you have the orange pop right here. Uh, it looks like a Harley Quinn look, Miss Andrea. I know, right? I love it. Okay. Thank you, helper. I appreciate you. So I don't have anything else. Huh? I don't have anything else to do. <clears throat> I'm gonna start my um my own blog. Just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. This is nasty. It looks like blood. Ew, they're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so five in and three full droppers of orange color shots and the same application procedure. So since we're in the front, we're doing vertical sections, we're starting in the back, taking one fourth inch sections and moving them away from the face. So the first thing we're gonna do is outline the section. Is doing them vertical or something that we should learn or know? <clears throat> like on a test or something? I think it's, I think it's, um, respect, like it's a, sh it's a, a gesture that shows that you care because okay. in their face, like when you start in the back and you move it away from their face, it's just so much more comfortable. And that's the little details that they're going to be looking for, you know? And also the neater it is like this, the easier it is to like have clean, neat application. Like there, I have seen people who have like full duck origami that looks amazing, but it's all sliding off the hair, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, just keep everything simple, neat, clean. Is that supposed to be light or dark? Yeah, so this is going to end up a five. Okay. Yeah. Because you put the... The drops into the five in. Five in, okay. Yep. The other thing with Paul Mitchell Color that I want to just kind of uh mention to you guys too once you guys start going out into the floor experimenting with like actual color on clients is that when you open a tube of color in paul mitchell it's really weird the color that it oxidizes in air will really scare you because it's like you know you're doing a neutral brown and it's copper and it just doesn't make any sense well this is due to the product hitting air. It has nothing to do with how it's gonna end up looking. Okay, so you can always ensure your guest of that. <laughs> and then do you guys know what holidays are? The bleeding of the color, right? Yeah, or spots that you have missed. Yeah. So little holidays are just spots that are dry that didn't get processed and saturated correctly. Or they bled through a foil. How do you avoid holidays? Check your work, take clean sections, go back through and make sure after like 10 minutes of it processing, you'll be able to see it better. So check it after like 10 minutes and you'll be able to see dry spots better. So just, I would say let it process a little bit and then check it after, just make sure. This is the pot? Mm-hmm. We 
we can do it. We can make it last. Oh yeah, we can make it last. All right. There's nothing worse than getting to your last panel and having to stop and go make some more color to me. Because you're on a roll and then you gotta stop. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what this last one is. Mm, that would be awesome to practice that. I'm just like gray highlight. I have my mannequin that I took platinum, uh -huh. that I buzz cut and took it platinum because um, I'm doing some quartz mm -hmm. throughout it. Cool. Oh, she's not gray. This is so interesting. <clears throat> All right. Let's see her face up. Here's my towel. Okay, you guys, thank you for, I tried to talk you guys through it. I'm sorry if it was a little boring. All right, so here's Jane. So. Hi guys. All right, so this was the first section. This is the Demi 6OR. This is Orange Pop. And this is 5N with three full droppers of Orange Intensifier. So is she going to be like a redhead with that, with those three drops? Or what's the, what was the, what was the objective of that? The objective is to end up as neutral as possible. So with these, obviously, there's going to be levels of neutrality, right? So mm -hmm. you're going to have the one that was just straight five in that's going to be very ash. Then you're going to have something that's like a little bit more neutral. Then as you go into the orange pop, it might be a little bit more chocolatey. So I want you guys to see what happens when you do these different colors. Mm -hmm. So, and then if you want to change it that you can pull back on whatever it is that you're using so if it was too intense then maybe you need to do peachy keen instead of this full blown blown orange or you know do one color shot instead of three okay. it's all about practicing while you're in school and watching it happen so that you if you're a visual learner it's like, oh, the warmer side became warmer and has these tones and that's how you make chocolate, right? And what kind of chocolate? Milk chocolate, dark chocolate? <laughs> okay, so this is what my plan is. I'm going to rinse everything out in about 30 minutes. And then I'm going to apply on the two sections that we did with the Demi and the Pop, the five in. And then when you guys come back from lunch, then we'll see the results. So are we doing like, is Rachel, is our 12.30 call gonna be this as well? Yes, the 12.30 call is gonna be the results and like questions and stuff. Okay, sounds good. Does anybody have any questions for me at the moment? Rachel, do you think I need to clarify anything? Oh, I think probably um, after, um, after lunch when we rinse it out and see how it looks, then we can probably go over any questions. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you so much for asking me to do this. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. So did I go? Did I take a good amount of time? Yeah. So after, are you going to have them um, rinsed out and dried so we can see it already after when you come back? Yes. Oh, cool. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. 
like a reveal? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's my bronzed beauty. <laughs> okay. We're going to do that then. And you guys will see <laughs> Jane when she's made over. And I'll talk to you and see you soon. Okay. Great. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so we're free to leave now? Yes. Thank you, guys. Ev, you're free to go. We'll see you at 1230. Have a great lunch. Thank you, Miss uh, Rachel. Okay. Bye, you guys.